What the? But, but those aren't the bites I sent. Those are... Ah! Hey everybody, today we're gonna talk about Endianness. Big Endian, Little Endian, which can be a huge source of frustration for students. And it's also a topic that makes you think that life would be a lot better if companies would just talk more to each other. So the other day, one of my students was working on debugging a system that she built and she was getting very frustrated. She had two machines, a laptop and a little microcontroller based device, the Teensy 3.6. She was sending data from the laptop to the Teensy, but what was coming out on the other side didn't match what she was sending. Or so she thought, and the problem was byte order. When you write a program that uses a multi-byte integer, so that's a short or a long or an int, we think of them as having a single value, but they are stored as individual distinct bytes. And when we write numerical values, we typically write them like this, with the most significant byte coming first and the least significant byte coming last. When a computer does this, we call it big endian. That means the big end comes first, the most significant end is the big end, so that end comes first. But some computers store it the other way with the little end first, or little endian. So we have big Endian machines, we have little Endian machines. If you're on an Intel processor, you're probably using little Endian. If you're on a PowerPC or a Sun Spark machine, you're using big Endian. So if you're using an ARM, ARMs are by Endian. Come on, ARM, just pick a side. With by Endian machines, the machine can actually work in either mode. So it'll depend on software which mode you're actually in. Now, most of the time, you don't have to really think about byte order because your compiler and the architecture just sort of magically takes care of it for you. And that's why byte order issues can be so annoying is because we forget about them. They're not normally in the front of our minds. And so when it does become a problem, it's often the last thing we think to check. So let's look at an example of where byte order matters. Say I'm sending some data to another machine somewhere on the network. By the way, you can check out my sockets videos to see how to do this. In this program, I have some data. The data for this example could be a struct, an array, or it, but it could be an int. And I'm just gonna stick with an int. I'm gonna stick with numerical data, just a single number to keep things simple. Now, now say I've got a function that takes an array of bytes and it's gonna send those bytes over the network as a packet or a message. So I can copy that number into a byte array and then send the byte array, send that whole packet. And now just so we can see what's being sent, let's print out the individual bytes. And you can see that it's stored in little endian order because the six seven comes first and the zero one comes last. And that's how it's gonna be sent over the network. And that's how the other computer will receive it. But what if that other computer uses big Endian byte order? In that case, that number is going to be interpreted very differently. And that's what was happening with my student. And to figure it out involved both time and frustration. Okay, so what do we do about it? The standard way to handle this problem is to use a standard byte order, often called network byte order. And then when communicating, all machines out there are going to use that network byte order so they can all understand one another. Currently, Big Endian is the standard network byte order for the internet. And if that ever changes, that change might earn itself a spot with the four horsemen of the apocalypse. It's probably not gonna change. And if you're programming in C, there are a bunch of standard functions that most platforms provide that help you switch from your native host byte order to the network byte order, or from network byte order back to your native host order, or if you specifically want big Endian or little Endian, there's functions that will handle that. For example, this not so easily readable name means host to network long. Okay, so that's gonna work with longs or four byte ints. And this NTOHS means network to host short. So that's gonna work with shorts, which are two byte ints. And it's gonna convert from network byte order to whatever the native host byte order is for the machine. And of course you could always roll your own, do it yourself and flip your bytes around. But if you don't have to, why? I just recommend using what's already provided. Another alternative is that you can send your data as text. So binary data is more compact. It's probably more efficient. You're not going to have to send as many bytes over the network. But text is always going to be interpreted the same way on all machines, assuming that the software is handling it the same. So text-based protocols like HTTP typically don't have to worry so much about byte order issues, where binary protocols like DNS do. And this isn't just for network communication. Anytime you're writing binary data to a file, that file might be read on another machine and it might have a different byte order. So again, you better keep an eye on your byte order. But maybe right now you're asking yourself, this is such a pain, why do we have both varieties? Isn't there just one best way to do it? And the answer is no, not really, there really isn't. People usually think Big Endian is more readable. It can also make some operations simpler, like checking the sign of a number or comparing two numbers. And when connected to the internet, a Big Endian machine doesn't have to swap bytes when it receives them from the network. So that's a plus. 
On the other hand, Little Endian may make things like parity checking simpler. I've also heard people argue that Little Endian is mathematically more natural because a lot of our mathematical operations start with the low order byte. And you see this like in addition, you start with the low order byte first and then you move from low order to high order, so why not store them that way? Another thing that people like about Little Endian is that a two byte int, if interpreted as a four byte int, is gonna be the same number. So maybe that's an advantage. But really, if there was one clear winner, don't you think everybody would be using it? Like so many things in computing, it really seems like a matter of preference. But the really annoying part is that all these chip makers out there could have saved us a lot of headaches by just getting together and deciding, hey, we're all going to do it one way, and then we wouldn't have to worry about it. Think how much easier life would be. But they didn't, so you and I need to be careful when writing code that's going to send, save, receive, and interpret binary data. And that's all I have for today. Tune in next time when I... Actually, I have no idea what my next video is gonna be about, but if you don't wanna miss it, you can always subscribe to the channel, click the little bell, and then you'll be notified when, when I post it. Bye.